hii ni kwamba Kristo atamponda joka au atamponda shetani kichwa. Na ndio unaposoma Warumi 16 aya yake ya 19 hadi 20 ningependa uweze kusikiliza lugha ya kitabu cha Warumi. Warumi 16 19 hadi 20 tunaambiwa for your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you kwa hivyo paulo anasema hivi paulo anapozungumza unapoangalia paulo anazungumza baada ya msalaba wa kristo na ndio maana pointi ambayo unataka uweze kuelewa ni kwamba the work was not completed at the cross kazi hii haikukamilishwa pale msalabani kwa nini Paulo anasema ya kwamba the bruising of uh, of Satan's head itafanyika shortly. Kwa hivyo anazungumzia wakati au kipindi cha wakati unaokuja sio wakati uliopita. Kwa hivyo na maana ya kwamba Kristo ataitimiliza kazi hii maana ulipokuwa unaangalia ukisoma Leviticus chapter 16 utaelewa ya kwamba during the day of atonement ama siku ya upatanisho ni kwamba kwani mkuu alipokuwa anatoka kutoka patakatifu pa, 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 patakatifu alikuwa anakuja na kuwekelea mkono wake kwenye kichwa cha mbuzi yule wa Azazeli the Azazel goat ama the scapegoat na ndio ilikuwa ni ishara ya kwamba Mungu alikuwa ametoa unabii ya kwamba uzao wa mwanamke utamponda joka kichwa kwa hivyo yule chief priest ama kuhani mkuu alikuwa anamwashiria Yesu Kristo ambaye at the end of the plan of redemption at the completion of the work in the most holy place atakuja na shetani atapewa res, atabeba responsibility ya dhambi na kisha ataangamizwa na dhambi zote. Napenda uweze kusikiliza jambo hili. The plan of redemption ni kwamba Mungu ameweka mbinu ya kwamba katika mpango huu God has a desire. Katika desire alionayo Mungu ni kwamba God desires to destroy kitu kinaitwa dhambi. He wants to destroy sin. Lakini Mungu anapotaka kuyaribu dhambi, anapoangalia wanadamu akinitazama mimi na wewe ni kwamba Mungu anapotuangalia anaona dhambi ipo ndani mwetu. Na tunaambiwa ya kwamba Mungu aliupenda ulimwengu. Kwa hivyo Mungu anapotupenda sisi na kuangalia ndani yetu kuna dhambi. Na yeye anataka kuiangamiza dhambi. Na ikiwa ataiangamiza dhambi ikiwa ndani yetu, basi na maana ya kwamba ataniangamiza mimi na wewe na dhambi hiyo. Na basi Mungu akaja na mpango. Na katika mpango huu ni kwamba dhambi iweze kuondolewa katika mioyo ya wanadamu. Ili kwamba Mungu anapoiangamiza dhambi, aiangamize dhambi kando. Na kwa neema ya Kristo, mimi niwe nimevikwa utakatifu wa Kristo. Nimefanyika mtakatifu, nimehesabiwa haki ndani ya Kristo, ili kwamba dhambi inapoangamizwa, mimi niwe nimesoma upande wa Mungu, nikiwa tayari nimetakaswa kama ilivyo kwa mapenzi ya Mungu. Na basi kazi hii ndiyo kwamba tunaambiwa itakamilika mimi na wewe tutakapokuwa tayari kumruhusu Mungu akaweze kuifanya kazi hiyo na kuikamilisha katika maisha yangu na katika maisha yako. Na ndio ningependa uweze kuelewa ya kwamba jinsi unavyoishi katika maisha hii ama maisha haya katika ulimwengu huu hauwepo hau ama haujawepo katika ulimwengu huu kwa ajali. Mungu alikuumba kwa kusudi God needs us. Ya kwamba Mungu anatuhitaji. Na ndio utakapoelewa kwamba Mungu anakuhitaji na wewe ni mtu wa thamani sana thamani kubwa mbele za Mungu basi na maana ya kwamba utainuka na kuweza kuifanya kazi ambayo Mungu anataka uweze kuifanya You see you are needed at this time maana ndio kazi hii iweze kukamilika Mungu anakukumbusha jambo hili Unaisoma katika kitabu kinajulikana kama Signs of the Times ya April 22nd mwaka wa na 1903 na pia unaweza ukaisoma katika kitabu kimeandikwa kinaitwa Ransom and Reunion imeandikwa na WD na WD Frazi ni kitabu kizuri unaweza ukakipata kwenye mtandao kitakusaidia kuweza kuelewa mambo haya ina jumbe nzuri mara inakusaidia kuelewa more of the sanctuary message inaitwa Ransom and Reunion tunaambiwa each one is different ya kwamba kila mtu ni tofauti na mwenzake a new individual did you ever see anyone like you If you could find your duplicate your value will drop at least 50%. But there is no danger. You are unique. God needed only one like you, but he needed that one. We were brought into existence because we were what? Needed. Ya kwamba Mungu amekufanya kuwa Adventist msabato, God brought us as a people, the Seventh Day Adventist, mwaka wa 1844 anapotuinua because he needed us. Mungu anapokuinua na kukufanya umeketi hapa chini ya sauti yangu ukinisikiliza jioni ya leo, Mungu anakukumbusha ya kwamba I need you. For this work to be completed, I need you to surrender your will in mine so that I may finish the work that I may enable you 
to stand ili nikuwezeshe wewe pia uwe mkamilifu na mtakatifu kama vile mimi nilivyo mtakatifu na ndio kazi hii inazidi kuendelea mpaka sasa lakini jambo ambalo ningependa uweze kusikiliza maana tumeangalia ya kwamba there is a work of investigation ambayo inaendelea na katika kazi hii ambayo inaendelea kazi hii ambayo inafanyika inaitwa the cleansing of the sanctuary ambayo ni the uh, ambayo inaitwa the investigative judgment pia ambayo pia inaitwa the day of atonement ama the antitypical day of atonement ambao Kristo anazidi kuifanya in the most holy place ni kazi kubwa ambayo kwamba shetani anapoelewa anajua ya kwamba mimi na wewe tutakapoelewa kazi hii ina maana ya kwamba we will willingly surrender ourselves to Christ that Kristo aweze kumaliza kazi hii ili aweze kumalizisha kazi kule juu mbinguni aje atuchukue tuondoke katika ulimwengu huu uliojadhiki na taabu the devil understands this sikiliza dada white anapozungumza anasema jambo hili katika manuscript releases volume 8 page 245 paragraph 2 anasema The correct understanding of the ministration of the heavenly sanctuary is the foundation of our what? Our faith. Ya kwamba mimi na wewe kama Adventist am sabato we need this understanding. Kile ambacho nimekupa tu mimi nimekupa kionjo. Maana muda utaniruhusu kuweza kwenda kwa undani zaidi. Lazima tujifundishe na kutengeneza tabia ambayo kwamba tunaweza tukajisomea wenyewe. Tabia ambayo kwamba tutafanya kutafuta na kuchunguza maandiko kwa wenyewe ili tuweze kuelewa habari hii. Na ndio tunaambiwa ya kwamba the correct understanding of the ministration of the heavenly sanctuary is the foundation of our faith. Ina maana ya kwamba kama ndio msingi, ina maana ya kwamba if it is the foundation Then lazima mimi na wewe tuweze kuielewa. Maana ikiwa hatuna msingi, basi imani yetu haiwezi ikasimama kama Mwadventista msabato. Maana the foundation of our faith is that ministration of Christ in the most holy place. Na ndio Daudi anatukumbusha anatuambia katika kitabu cha Zaburi 11 aya yake ni ya tatu, anasema if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Shetani anaelewa ya kwamba if the sanctuary message is the foundation of our faith anajua ya kwamba if he destroys the foundation of our faith then there is no adventism. Ya kwamba ikiwa msingi huu utaondolewa basi wa sabato hatupo tena. Adventism imekufa. Utakaa hapa kila sabato tunakuja kuabudu ndio lakini kwa sababu hatuelewi kazi ambayo imemkamilisha Kristo kuja mpaka sasa ina maana ya kwamba shetani atafurahia tu. Maana anajua ya kwamba kile kitakacho mwangamiza mwisho ni dhambi yangu na dhambi yako ambayo tumeipeana kwa Kristo kabla ya hukumu kukamilika. Na ndio kazi hiyo anaiogopa Sandra White anasema there is nothing that the Satan fears as that the people of God should remove every hindrance. Ya kwamba hiyo ndio kazi anaiogopa. That is the thing that he fears so much. Anaogopa sana. Na ndio maana jioni ya leo lazima tuweze kuelewa habari hii. Kisha tunaambiwa katika Review and Herald. Review and Herald ya May 25, 1905, paragraph 28. Sikiliza vile tunavyoambiwa. Review and Herald uh, May 25, 1905, paragraph 28. Maana tunaambiwa kwamba this is the pillar of our faith, the ministration of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. It is the pillar of our faith. Maana that is the message ambayo tumepewa. This is what we are to take to the world. Maana kazi ambayo inafanyika pale, it is the work of dealing with the sin problem shida ambayo tupo nao katika ulimwengu huu it is the sin problem unaposoma Luke chapter 3 verse number 9 Yohana anazungumza na kusema ya kwamba and now the axe is laid at the root of the problem kwa wale ambao wamesoma the medical missionary uh, 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 work utaelewa ya kwamba when we are dealing with the diseases na magonjwa we address uh, uh, magonjwa na shida hizi zote katika maisha ya wanadamu from the root hatuwezi anza kungangana na, na matunda yake the symptoms we address it from the root of the problem na Mungu naye anataka ku address the problem ambaye nawasumbua wanadamu katika ulimwengu mpaka sasa it is the sin problem na ndio maana god has a principle and the principle of god is that he address it from the root of the problem and the root ya shida ambayo ipo katika ulimwengu mpaka sasa it is the sin problem. Na ndio Mungu anataka kuiondoa the sin problem. Na ndio for the sin problem to be done away with, unaposoma Daniel chapter 12 verse number 10, tunaambiwa many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Ina maana ya kwamba for I to be purified, then I need an understanding. 
Maana tunaambiwa they that will have an understanding ndio tunaambiwa wanaitwa the wise. And my Bible tells me ya kwamba the wise ndio watakao ingia katika ufalme wa Mungu. Imani ya Mwenyezi Mungu sio imani ya watu wapumbavu. Unaposoma kitabu cha Mathayo 25 Yesu anapotoa mfano anatoa mfano ya wanawali wapumbavu na wenye busara the wise virgins na tunaona the wise virgins ndio wanaishia kuingia kwenye harusi ya mwana kondoo kwa hivyo ina maana ya kwamba the wise ndio watakolefai kuingia katika uzima na tunaambiwa these wise will have an understanding and because they do have an understanding then they will sanctify themselves na ndio tunaambiwa many shall be purified and made clean or white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but it is only the wise that will do will, will, will have an understanding and because they do have an understanding that is why they are purified and made white and tried ya kwamba kristo ataweza kuikamilisha kazi hii ndani mwao lakini basi sikiliza review and herald ya may 25th 1905 paragraph 28 tunaambiwa in the future sikiliza dada white anazungumza anatoa unabii anasema in the future Deception of every kind is to arise and we want solid ground for our feet. Ya kwamba katika siku zinakuja usoni kuna madanganyo yatakayoingia lakini tunataka a firm ground, a solid ground for our faith. Uh, for our feet. Kisha anasema we want solid pillars for the building. Not one pin is to be removed from that which the Lord has established. The enemy will bring in false theories such as the doctrine that there is no sanctuary. This is one of the points on which there will be a departing from the faith. Ya kwamba kile ambacho shetani atafanya it is to bring theories and to present messages that will make men believe that there is no sanctuary in heaven from whence Christ is seeking to complete the work. Na ndio maana tumeweza kuelewa mpaka sasa if we fail to have this understanding then we will fail to have the correct experience and that experience ambao Kristo anaifanya in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary jana tuliona ya kwamba for the 144000 ili waweze kuwa wamesimama jinsi ambavyo tunaambiwa that finally they were standing on mount zion tunaambiwa for them to stand tunaambiwa they had an experience and that experience tunaambiwa they followed the lamb wheresoever he goeth walimfuata mwana kondoo popote aendapo ina maana ya kwamba when christ was in the outer court they followed him there when christ was in the outer to court being crucified as the lamp they were crucified with the savior na ndio maandiko paulo anasema katika nimesahau ni wa galatia ni 220 anasema i am crucified with christ ya kwamba nimesulubiwa na yesu kristo tena si mimi ninayeishi bali nani anayeishi ni kristo and so they followed christ in experience in the outer court yesu kristo anaposonga anapobatizwa katika beseni ile leva walimfuata in experience they were baptized and they were resurrected to the newness of life they were crucified with christ they were buried with christ and they resurrected to the newness of life with christ they followed christ to the most holy place or to the holy place of the heavenly sanctuary they lived a life of prayer they lived a life where that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the lord na kisha maisha yao yalikuwa ni nuru kwa ulimwengu mzima and they followed Christ even into the most holy place and they lived a life of victory over sin a glorified life na ndio tunaambiwa we need to follow Christ wheresoever he goeth by experience or in experience and by faith na ndio tunaambiwa ya kwamba the devil will come with the doctrines that there is no sanctuary this is one of the points on which there will be a departing from the faith na ndio ni kuonyeshe tu mifano uh, uh, kuna video hapa ambayo kidogo kwa sababu yangu haina sauti tutachezewa kwenye screen hii nyingine ningependa uweze kusikiliza tu uh, uweze kusikiliza mwenyewe uh, mimi sina shida naye maana najua ya kwamba Uh, ile shida nilio nayo ni doctrine ambayo kwamba anaifundisha nitakuwekea video mbili tu ambayo moja hii ilitokea miaka ya kule nyuma kule Marekani na nyingine imetokea hapa kwetu Nairobi tu uh, mwaka jana ni mwaka jana au ni mwaka huu ni kumkati ya mwaka jana mwaka huu nikikumbuka vizuri mwaka jana mwaka jana ilikuwa ni mwaka jana November pale 
katika Nairobi kanisa la Nairobi Central ili ukaweze kujisikizia tu alafu tuangalie katika ushahidi wa maandiko kama ndivyo vile maandiko inavyosema au ni mambo na dhana nyingine ambayo ya mambo yamechukuliwa tu ningependa ukaicheze ile video ambayo ilikuwa nyuma umekwenda mbele sana rejea nyuma kidogo nyuma Ae, hiyo ndio video nataka uweze ukaicheza Sio wiki ambao ambao ni raisi. Utaweka tu kama ni sauti inaweza ikasikika ni sawa tu kama iwezi ikacheza maana najua setting ambao nimetumia kidogo kwa upande wako unaweza ukakusumbua lakini unaweza ukaiweka tu kama ni sauti hata tukiisikia. Naweza tukapata kile anasema.
calculations. Kwa hivyo hizo calculation ni kwamba uh, hakuna the papal supremacy ya kutokea 538 paka 1798 hakuna kitu kama hicho na basi hata the sanctuary message ambayo tunasema the heavenly sanctuary vitu hivyo vyote anasema ya kwamba they are not there. Ndivyo anavyozungumza this man is a seventh day adventist or he was. Sina shida na he was a part of the seventh day adventist faith. Mimi ile shida ndiyo nayo ni kwamba the doctrine na the teaching ambayo kwamba anaitoa. Kando na huyo ningependa unicheze ile video nyingine alafu kisha niweke point yangu kwa dakika chache maana muda utaturuhusu kwenda zaidi. Hiyo ilikuwa ni ya last year uh, November pale Nairobi Central. to understand that the devil is at war with this message. Kwa sababu anajua you see tunaambiwa dada White anazungumza anasema hivi katika selected messages book 1 page 124 paragraph 2 anasema there is nothing that Satan fears so much as that the people of God shall clear the way by removing every hindrance so that the Lord can pour out his spirit upon a languishing church and an impenitent congregation. If Satan had his way there would never be another awakening great or small to the end of time but we are not ignorant of his devices. And so the devil understands if man fails to have an understanding of the ministration of Christ in the most holy place ikiwa mimi na wewe shetani atatufanya tusiweze kuona if he darkens our minds from beholding Christ in the most holy place then he is so sure that we will fail to have the experience needed the experience of the most holy place on time and the work will not be finished on time and thus we will not be prepared on time you see, God desires that we may be a people that have a clear understanding of the ministry that Christ is doing or the ministry that Christ is undertaking in the most holy place. And our lives here on earth is to comprehend with that ministry that Christ is undertaking in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Shetani anajua ya kwamba ikiwa mimi na wewe tutaelewa kazi hii and we allow Christ 
to finish that work in our hearts, thus removing every hindrance so that, the, uh, so that he can pour his spirit upon a languishing church and an impenitent congregation, the devil understands. And that is why we are told there is nothing that he fears so much as if the people of God shall clear the way by removing every hindrance. And that is why we have seen, kutoka jana na leo, my focus has been to help us understand that there is a sanctuary in heaven. There is a sanctuary in heaven. I wish to get na more time so that we may go deep and see this message. The 2300 days, step by step, 22 wiki angalia, but now time won't allow us. Maana kumekuwa na complications za mitambo hapa na pale, so we cannot get deep into it. But you see, in Proverbs 29 verse number 18, tunambiwa hivi. Proverbs 29 verse number 18, tunambiwa where there is no vision, the people do what? Perish. The devil understands this. When we lack this vision, when we lack the understanding of the 2300 day prophecy, then he understands that we, the people, will perish. Sikiliza ni kuambia vizuri maana, when you study Daniel 8, Ukianzia verse number 13 and verse number 14, utaelewa what I'm telling you. Because in verse number 13, there is a conversation. Ukianzia verse 12, 13, you will see a conversation between an angel and Jesus Christ. There is a conversation. And then in verse number 13, an angel poses a question to Jesus Christ. Na namuliza Jesus Christ, how long? But unaposoma, Jesus did not respond to the angel, but Jesus turns and looks to Daniel and responds the answer to that question, and I peana to Daniel. Na namuambia Daniel, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Kwa nini hakujibu yule malaika? Because this was not a message ambayo malaika walikuwa anaitaji so much, but it was a message that Daniel and humanity, you and I, needed so much an understanding of it. Na ndiyo maana yesu anapo zunguka, anamuambia Daniel, and unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And your man, any message that does away with the sanctuary message, then that is not the message that God desires of us to, to understand. Ellen White anasema in the book, Early Writings, page 63, paragraph 1, 2, and 3, anasema, anazungumza vizuri, anasema, there are so many precious truths that's contained in the word of God. But it is the present truth that the flock needs now. That such messages as the sanctuary message in connection with the 2,300 days and the commandment-keeping people of God, these are the messages that are calculated to unite the flock. And so this is the message that we need at the moment, the sanctuary message in connection with the 2,300 days. Unaposikia, unaposema if the sanctuary message in connection with 2,300 days, then any Bible student will understand that this is the message that talks or speaks or enlightens us more about the ministry of Christ in the most holy place. And this is the message about Nambio. This is what we need now. Mana, this is the message that is united or is calculated to unite the flock with the Savior and to unite the flock one with another and to prepare a body and a people here on earth prepared to stand during the investigative judgment. You see, before Michael stands up, he must have a people who are standing. Nandio mana kazi he. Shetani anajua, na ndiyo anaipinga kwa sana. Na ndiyo tunambiwa the great controversy, page 409, paragraph 1, tunambiwa the scripture, which above all others, had been both the foundation and the central pillar of the Advent faith, was the declaration, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. This had been familiar with our uh, words to all believers in the Lord's soon coming. By the lips of thousands was this prophecy repeated as the watchword of their faith. This is the pen of inspiration, and it was the testimonies of Jesus. You see, but, but, but by their fruits ye shall know them. Mtu anapo inuka na kuzungumza utajua ya kwamba anazungumza kwa sauti ya nani. Maana mungu anasema ya kwamba these scriptures which above all others had been both the foundation and the central pillar of the Advent faith. And it was that declaration unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. The message ambayo inatuleta the 2,300 years, ambayo inatuleta to 1844, October 22nd. It is the pillar of our faith. Nandiyo shetani anajua ya kwamba, you see, when the, if the foundation be shaken, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous man do? 
Na ndiyo maana when you do away with the sanctuary message then there is no adventism. And that is what the devil understands. Na ndiyo maana anataka kuondoa hii message because when, when, when you study the Bible and you understand the responsibility ambayo Mungu anatupa as a people it is in connection to the ministry that Christ is doing in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Na ndiyo maana the devil understands and that is why he is seeking to destroy the foundation and the pillar of our faith. This is the work that he has been seeking to do. Na ndiyo kazi ambayo Kristo anataka mimi na wewe tuweze kuelewa. Ningependa niweze kuzungumza kwa muktasari tu alafu kisha tuweze kumalizia. Daniel 8:13 anasema, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto the certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation? to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden under foot verse number 14 anasema and he said unto me daniel anasikiliza anasema i heard one saint speaking to another saint na kisha anasema huyo saint anayezungumza na another saint anauliza swali how long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Nakisha verse number 14, Daniel anasema, And he said, Not unto the other saint or that other angel, but he said unto me. Anazungumza na Daniel. Na tayari nimesha zungumza mambo hayo. Anazungumza anasema, Unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Anamkumbusha Daniel na mwambia kwamba unto 2,300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. This is a message that you need to understand. Na tumeangalia from day one paka sasa that the cleansing of the sanctuary is synonymous to the day of, of, the, the day of, of atonement and it is also synonymous to the day of judgment. Na ndiyo kazi ambao kristo anaifanya in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary in aitua the investigative judgment. Na tumeangalia kutoka jana Tumeangalia with the evidences of the scriptures. Na ndiyo na muambia 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Ya kwamba it was 2,300 days, itakapo isha tu, then the sanctuary is to be cleansed. Or the cleansing of the sanctuary is to begin. Na ndiyo yale ambayo mungu anataka tuweze kwelewa. Kuna mengi ambayo kwa jioni alewe ikiwa rutasonga zaidi, uh, hatutaweza kuikamilisha kwa sasa lakini ningependa niweze kutia tu point fulani alafu kisha tuweze kuhitimisha kwa ajili ya mafundisho mengine ambayo tutaweza kuyashikiliza kutoka kesho manake sitaki kurejelea tena katika fundisho hili la hekalu ni matumaini yangu ya kwamba tunaelewa unabii huu wa miaka 2300 natumai tu uh, kwa kushuku vile maana tumekuwa na lesoni ambayo kwa undani pia tuliangalia uh, unabii huu wa siku 2300 Ningependa sana tuweze kuangalia lakini muda utaniruhusu kwa sasa na ikiwa roho wa Mungu ataniongoza niweze uh, tuweze kuirejelea siku ya kesho ni sawa tu tutairejelea lakini mengine ya kule mbele tutakosa kusonga kwa hivyo uh, vile Mungu atakavyoniwezesha basi ndivyo tutakavyoangalia kwa hivyo nataka tuweze kuangalia kwa dakika chache tu tuangalia what is this sanctuary ni, ili tuweze kuangalia ushahidi maana tuliona ya kwamba kuna mambo ambayo shetani anataka kuweza kupenyeza ili akaondoe misingi Na ndio nataka tuweze kuangalia ushahidi tu ushahidi au mashahidi kama wanne. Mashahidi wanne tu alafu kisha tumalize. Mashahidi wanne katika Biblia ambao wana, wanaashiria wazi ya kwamba there is a sanctuary in heaven. Shahidi wa kwanza anaitwa Musa. This is Moses. Najua tunamuelewa Musa. Musa katika Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25 verse 8 to verse number 9. Musa anasema hivi And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I shew thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof even so shall ye make Musa anasema ya kwamba Mungu anapomwambia atengeneze patakatifu when God commanded him to make a sanctuary alipopewa ile agizo aende azungumze na wana wa Israeli Musa anasema Mungu alimwambia ya kwamba make sure Ya kwamba the sanctuary ambao unaitengeneza according to all that I show thee after the pattern unaposoma Hebrews 
chapter 7 na chapter 8 utaelewa ya kwamba Mungu alipozungumza na Musa in chapter 8 asua anamwambia Musa a make sure ameitengeneza hekalu according to the pattern ambaye Mungu alimuonyesha in the heavenly sanctuary kwa hivyo maana ya kwamba the, the, the sanctuary ambayo inatengenezwa hapa duniani was in the pattern of that heavenly sanctuary ambaye Musa anaonyeshwa na Mungu. Kwa hivyo shahidi wa kwanza ya kwamba there is a sanctuary in heaven, shahidi wa kwanza ni Musa. The second witness tunakutana naye anaitwa Apostle Paul. Paulo anasema hivi katika Hebrews chapter 8 verse number 1 to verse number 2. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 to verse number 2 anasema hivi, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum Ya kwamba kwa mambo yote ambayo tumezungumzia hii ndio summary yake this is the summation of it all anasema this is the sum we have such an high priest which uh, an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty where is that throne of the majesty located in heaven sasa sikiliza kwa hivyo Yesu Kristo tunaambiwa is that high priest and he is located or is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Kisha nasema pale in the heavens, there is a work that he is doing. Na kisha tunambiwa that work is that he is a minister of the what? The sanctuary. Where is Christ ministering from? Where is he ministering from? Heaven. Kwa hivyo kama ana minister in heaven, then tunambiwa where he is ministering is of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not man, then where is this sanctuary located? Is it on earth or in heaven? In heaven. Then is there a sanctuary in heaven? Yes. There is a sanctuary in heaven. Mahali ambapo Kristo anafanya ministry yake. Shahidi mwingine wa tatu. Huyu uh, uh, shahidi wa pili tu bado tuko kwenye Paulo. Hebrews chapter 8 verse number 5 anasema, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for see saith he that thou make all things according to the pattern should thee in the mount Ya kwamba ile pattern ambao Musa alitengeneza hapa tunaambiwa it was a pattern it was a pattern after the shadow of heavenly things kwa hivyo ile hekalu ambao Musa alitengeneza hapa duniani aliitoa kopi yake wapi in heaven so that means there is a sanctuary where in heaven and that means anyone that will stand on this pulpit hata kama ni mimi nikitoka leo kesho nirudi niwaambie hakuna sanctuary mbinguni msiniamini because sizungumzi kwa sauti ya Mungu. Hata kesho nije hapa niseme hakuna hekalu mbinguni msiniamini kwa sababu ina maana ya kwamba sizungumzi kwa mantiki ya maandiko. This is what the Bible says. The third witness, the third witness anaitwa John. John. John anapozungumza anasema hivi katika Revelation chapter 1, verse number 10 to verse number 13 anasema hivi. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seen candlesticks, one like unto the son of who? Man. Kwa hivyo, Yohana anapopokea njozi, anamuona one like unto the son of who? Of man. Na namuona akio mesimama wapi? Anaonekana akiwa amesimama in the midst of the seven golden candle stick in the sanctuary where was that golden candle stick located in the holy place of the heavenly, of the sanctuary sio kwa hivyo ina maana ya kwamba huyo Yohana anapopokea njozi revelation inaandikwa wakati ambapo Yesu Kristo tayari ameshapaa kwenda mbinguni Kwa hivyo maana Yohana anapopokea njozi anapokea njozi na anamuona Yesu in heaven na pale in heaven anamuona Yesu akiwa katikati ya ta Yenye, ama ile kinara cha taa yenye matawi saba the, the seven branched candlestick ina maana ya kwamba in heaven there is a sanctuary this is our third witness shahidi watano shahidi watano uh, bado Yohana anazungumza kisha tuangalie shahidi watano Revelation 11 verse 19 anasema and the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of the covenant the ark of the covenant ilikuwa inapatikana wapi katika hekalu the most holy place kwa hivyo yohana anapoona anaona the temple of god was opened where so where is this temple located so is there a sanctuary in heaven 
Yes, definitely, absolutely. Na ndio maana mtu yote ambaye atainuka kuambia kwamba there is no sanctuary in heaven, then mtu yule he is not speaking in the voice of God. Maana sauti ya Mungu kwa neno lake linasema ya kwamba there is a sanctuary in heaven. And yeye anasema ya kwamba and the temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in the temple the ark of his testament and there were lightning and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and a great hail. Ya kwamba Yohana anapotazama anaona the ark of the covenant. Anaitazama the ark of the covenant. Na katika the ark of the covenant that is where the law of God inawekwa. Na unaposoma James James chapter 2 verse number 10 and verse number 12 anatuambia the law of God are the law or is the law of liberty ya kwamba ni sheria ya uhuru it is the law you see the law of God is not the law unto slavery it is the law unto liberty unto freedom na ndio Mungu anataka uweze kuelewa mambo haya lakini shetani anazidi kungangana maana hataki tuweze kuelewa the last witness witness number 4 ni king david Huyo Daudi witness number 4 ambaye ni shahidi wetu wa mwisho tunapomaliza witness number 4 Tunasoma in Psalms 102 verse number 18 and verse number 19 Psalms 102 verse 18 and verse number 19 Tunaambiwa this shall be written for the generation to come ya kwamba hii itaandikwa kwa ajili ya kizazi kinachokuja ama vizazi vinavyokuja kisha anasema and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord for he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary from where From, his, from the height tunaambiwa for he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary from where where is that sanctuary located so is there a sanctuary in heaven yes na kisha anasema ya kwamba did the lord behold the earth from his sanctuary from heaven or in his sanctuary from heaven so there is a sanctuary in heaven so many of these evidence zipo nyingi tu lakini nimechagua nime, nime tu machache kwa ajili ya kuweza kutusaidia. We need this understanding. Na ndio tunaambiwa great controversy page 4 iter paragraph 3 tunaambiwa the sanctuary in heaven is the very center of Christ's work in behalf of men. This is the very center of Christ's work in behalf of men. Na tayari tumeangalia nime, tumeangalia the summary, the ministry of Christ in the holy in the, in the in the in the in the in the outer court, the ministry of Christ in the holy place and the ministry of Christ in the most holy place. Tumeangalia. So tunaambiwa ya kwamba the sanctuary in heaven is the very center of Christ's work in behalf of men. It concerns every soul living upon the earth. Ya kwamba tunahitaji every soul upon the earth needs to understand the ministry of Christ. Na kisha tunaambiwa hivi it opens to view the plan of redemption bringing us down to the very close of time and revealing the triumphant issue of the contest between righteousness and sin it is of the utmost importance that all should thoroughly investigate these subjects and be able to give an answer to everyone that asketh them a reason of the hope that is in them The desire of God is that we may have this understanding. Ya kwamba Mungu anataka tuwe na kuelewa kwa namna hii. God wants us to understand. As we sum up thoughts for our consideration, tunapomalizia. You see, God wants us to understand. Tumeona ya kwamba the statements ambazo tumesoma makes it abundantly clear that it was God's plan for his people to be out of this world and in the heavenly canon at this very moment ndio tuliangalia kutoka juzi jana yote tumeangalia the fact that we are not is no fault of god's for he has done everything needed on his part it is the failure of his people that is the problem we cannot charge him with delaying his promise we must buy blame or we must lay the blame in whole honesty where it belongs on ourselves doing this means far more than merely acknowledging the problem and its causes it means studying to see where we have failed and then make the necessary steps to rectify the problem na ndio mungu anataka tuweze kuelewa mambo haya for ourselves god wants us to understand for ourselves he wants us to understand for ourselves finally tunapomaliza Sikiliza in Romans 16:20 tunaambiwa ya kwamba and the god of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
be with you. Amen. That you see the work of Christ, the ministry of Christ in the most holy place is not yet completed today. When it is completed, he is going to bruise or to crush the serpent's head shortly. Na ndiyo mimi na wewe ambao tunaishi katika wakati wetu wa sasa ndiyo Paulo alizungumza wakati ule but the fact that we are still here in this world today is a testament that the work is not completed and it is a call of Christ that we need to wake up it is a call of Christ that we need to study for, for ourselves tumeona there is a danger Shetani, the devil is fighting with the message that God in his divine wisdom gave us the message that he desires that we may be prepared. Unajua, it is a message that God gave that it may prepare a people to stand. In understanding the sanctuary message. And the devil is so clear. The devil is so cunning. He is seeking to divert our attention from the real issue. Yes, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so if you are seeking any truth, any present truth, then that present truth is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, where he is, what he is doing. The work that is currently doing in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. That is the present truth. That is the message that we need even today. Like in the devil is so cunning. And that is why right now presently there are so many messages that are not calculated to unite the flock. But to divide and to divide and to scatter the house of Christ even today. And your man are the only message that will unite the flock of Christ in that unity that Christ desires is the sanctuary message which is where Christ is and his ministry in the most holy place of that heavenly sanctuary. It is only that message that will prepare a people, that will sanctify a people as we shall see from tomorrow na tukiendelea mpaka tufike siku ya Ijumaa. We will see from tomorrow now we are getting deep into that message. Juzi jana na leo nimekuwa nikiset the foundation. I wanted us to understand the foundation so that kesho tunapoingia now deep into these messages and most uh, 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 assuredly, we will go into the 1888 message. Because that is the message that God gave us in the year 1888. It is only for us to advance our, own, our only safety. If we seek to advance, then it will be if we look back into the past. You see, the Ellen White says that we have nothing to fear for the future. As, except as we shall forget how far the Lord has led us and his teachings in our past history. And so we'll have to look back in order for us to advance. In order for us not to repeat the same mistakes that our pioneers did, we'll have to look back. Back in history, in what happened in the year 1888 and afterward. So that mimi na wewe leo na katika juma hili na siku zinazo kuja mpaka Yesu Christo atakapo rejea, we may not find ourselves in the same mistake that were committed by our pioneers that we may by the grace of Christ receive and embrace the message. You see, it is not enough to know and to hear the message. It is not enough. If the message is not experienced, if we do not leave that message, then it is as though we never heard the message at all. Kama ujumbe ambao tumekua tukubili. It is not enough to hear sermon after sermon. It is not enough to be coming into the church Sabbath after Sabbath. Maubili tumesikiliza tangia ulipo zadiwa katika imani hii. It is not enough if that message is not taken into our lives and by the grace of Christ works a transformation of character, then it is as though we never heard it at all. And your man, God is seeking to have a people who are no longer hearers of the word. But the people who by the grace of Christ have been taken step by step and now they are leaving the message. Like what Paul says in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse number 15. Paul and Asema, so in as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first and also to the Gentiles. You see, the preparedness to finish the work, the preparedness to finish the work, the preparedness to take the message to the world is when the message is first received into our lives. And this is the focus of our message this week. As we are asking Christ to teach us to number our days. God wants us to be those people that are truly furnished unto good works, the works of righteousness. 
He wants a people who he can finally say, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. People who are no longer struggling and trying. People who by the grace of Christ have attained victory over sin. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see, beloved, God desires to have a perfect people. It is possible tonight. Nataka ni kukumbushe, I want to assure you, it is possible to attain perfection of Christian character. Najua kwa miaka mingi, yes, we believe that God is able. God is able to do immeasurable more than we ever ask or imagine. Lakini mara nyingi, we doubt his power when it comes to victory over sin. And that is why, because of our doubt, we think that God cannot attain perfection in me and for me. Na ndiyo mana tunamini mungu wanaweza kafanya vitu vingine. Lakini when it comes to victory over sin, tunaanza kumdoubt mungu. But this week God has come here to remind us that he is the same all-powerful God. That he can enable us now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. And that he may present us blameless before the throne of his glory. God is able to keep us from falling. It doesn't matter Dhambi mekusumbua katika maisha yako miaka ngapi. It doesn't matter. But tonight, if you surrender your will to Christ, He is able to keep you from falling. He is able. Is that your prayer and your desire that He may keep you from falling? Is that your desire that He who is able to keep us from falling and present us blameless before His throne of grace and His throne of majesty? Is that your desire? Is it the prayer of your heart? If that is your prayer, may you be upstanding even as we pray. Tomorrow we are picking it deep into the message. And I want to request us that we may keep on praying for these meetings. This is not just an ordinary meeting. And today is a testament that the devil is at work. He is wroth with this message. And that is why today we have not even accomplished, uh, let's say, a half of what I had purposed for us to study. Nimejaribu to summarize the message. The devil understands that if we have this understanding, anajua, if we have this understanding and by experience embrace it, then he knows the work will be finished. And your manner, we need to pray for ourselves. Pray for these meetings. Because it is in these meetings where our eyes are to be opened. It is in these meetings where our thirst after righteousness is to be aroused in us. Yakwamba, I'm here to inspire us with that thirst. We need to thirst after the perfection of Christian character. Yakwamba, sio kukua tu watu wazuri peke yake, at mimi ni mzuri siibi. There will be a lot of good people in hell. God desires to have a perfect people even as he is perfect. A righteous people even as he is righteous. A holy people even as he is holy. And one thing that I know is my God is able, he is able to finish and to accomplish that for me. And that is my prayer tonight. That I may be that people, that person that he has prepared. The same way he looked down from heaven, this is the man. That there is no one like him, a man that fears God and hates evil. I desire to be that man in this generation. I desire to be among that people that will finish the work that Christ may return. I desire to be among that people that will even hasten unto the coming of the Lord. We are praying. And as I pray, pray for yourself. Take the burdens of your heart to the Lord in prayer. Claim his promises. Ambayo tumekwa tukisoma the promises in his word that he can perfect us by his grace in his own power. Talk to God. Talk to him tonight. Even as I pray, speak with him. He is that friend. He is our father. And the Bible reminds us that he is that friend that even sticks closer than a brother. Talk to him as friend to a friend. Take the burdens of your heart to him in prayer. Our merciful and loving father. There is no prayer that you desire to hear as that prayer of a sinner in bondage seeking freedom from the bondage of sin and you've assured us in your word that you are willing and you are able to lead us out of sin and to keep us from falling and to present us before your throne of grace blameless and without spot 
Dear Lord, the desire of our heart tonight is that we may among the number, we may be among that people, a denominated people, that will be able to stand on Mount Zion. But you've reminded us of one thing, that for us to be able to stand, that we may be that people that follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth, in experience and by faith. We desire to have the mind of Jesus. We desire to be clothed with the righteousness of Christ. We desire that Christ be our life, that we may live his life. Even as he stood blameless, even as he lived a life sinless, that we may be a people that are living that life even in this generation. Dear Lord, we want to come against every satanic and demonic forces. You've reminded us that it's, there is going to come a time when every earthly supply will be cut off. But we know when the earthly supplies are cut off, the heavenly supply is still streaming forth in all abundance and full of grace and truth. Dear Lord, tonight we have had all these kind of attacks. The electricity has been on and off. We've not even exhausted the message that you've desired for us to understand tonight. But your Holy Spirit, which is that effectual teacher, O oh Lord, we desire that he may lead us to an understanding. May you awaken that desire in our hearts that we may be willing to study for ourselves. That we may not let men to speak and to teach us and to lead us even into that path that is not that path of righteousness. That we may be willing to allow your Holy Spirit to teach us, O oh Lord, by your grace. Merciful Lord in heaven, for many years we've believed that you are able. But there is only one thing that we've thought you are not able. That you are not able to keep us from falling. But you've reminded us this week to this end. That you are able to keep us from falling. May you ignite a desire in our hearts to trust thee. That we may learn to trust in you, O our Lord. And that we may surrender our lives to you. That you may take away the sins in our heart. And that you may keep us from falling. And that when that time is come, you may present us blameless and faultless and without spot before your throne of grace. Tonight as we depart, disperse us with thine blessings. Bring us tomorrow in hither for more blessings of your word. And even as we desire to go deep into these messages, we know the devil is not well pleased. You who is powerful, make all crooked ways straight. May you take away all the hindrances that the devil has planted on our way, that he desires to hinder us even from coming in hither and to listen to these messages. May you give us a protection of our equipment and the power supply and our hearts and even our health. Give us voices even to sing praises unto you. May we be a people prepared that even tonight as we shall lay down to rest, may we be well rested in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, a people prepared to meet him when he returns. This is my prayer tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you.
kuongoza kwenye njia safi tena kwenye nuru joni nyote kwake Yesu joni nyote tumwabudu joni nyote tumsifu ni Mungu wa kweli tena wa ajabu yeye atatuongoza kwenye njia safi tena kwenye nuru Kwenye njia safi tena kwenye nuru 